Good afternoon. We are still talking about this uh, subject of Zimbabwe. Where are we now? A new dawn? And I put a question mark. I also said, cry the beloved country. Where to next? Uh, what we do here, I don't know whether you also have the same update. Emerson Mnangagwa has been declared Zimbabwe's interim president. Army takes over state TV but denies coup. Ruling party at Zanu PF says Mugabe detained but safe. Party tweets there was no coup, only a bloodless transition. Emerson Mnanga Gomed interim president. Mugabe's ruling party Zanu PF has made former Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa as the interim president. A section of the party who was opposed to Mugabe's wife becoming president looks to be running the soft coup in Zimbabwe. So let's just Google what is available in Mnangagwa. Let's say uh, it says Munangagwa in Zimbabwe to take control of Zimbabwe. The SA must offer political asylum, says EFF. So what does the article say? It says uh, dismissed former Zimbabwean Vice President Munangagwa arrived in Harare on Wednesday to take control of the country's government. Mnanga Gwanoni's crocodile was sacked last week amid a row over leadership in the ruling ZANU PF part, part, a party of Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe. Mnanga a veteran of the country's liberation struggle against white domination, fled to South Africa after death threats. Zimbabwe's military seized control of state television and says is acting against criminals surrounding 93-year-old Mugabe, but that the president and his family were safe. Major General S.B. Moyo, uh, the actions of the country's defense forces are not were not in a coup. Soldiers, tanks, and armored vehicles are in Harare. Events have unfolded after the head of the, of the Defense Force, General Chiwenga, warned on Monday that the army would take drastic action if factions in ZANU PF did not stop pages against party members with military background. ZANU PF issued a statement calling Chiwenga's comments treason. Chiwenga spoke of the G40 faction in, in ZANU PF, which supports Mugabe's wife, Grace, for succession, promised to page all allies uh, believed to be supporting the Lacoste function, faction, which is said to be uh, sympathetic to Monangagwa. And uh, that's what it uh, says. Uh, we have that uh, uh, as a starting point <clears throat> and uh, we have I think we have been waiting for a statement from uh, the president who was promised to make to have made a statement by 2 p.m which statement never came through. So we don't seem to have a confirmation of uh, Munangagwa. Uh, South Africa must offer political asylum, says uh, EFF. 
Zimbabwe. So there is a dismissed as landed at Manyame Air Force to take control of the government of the country's government while President Robert Mugabe has been detained on what the army has described as a bloodless transition of power. There are also unconfirmed reports that 93-year-old uh, Mugabe is under house arrest together with his wife Grace and other members of his close political circle. Uh, after clashing Mnanga uh, going in the backing of the military is known as uh, the current paging there is no confirmation yet uh, then who will replace uh, Robert Mugabe meet the crocodile uh, Okay, Zimbabwe, the, uh, the army in Zimbabwe has put Robert Mugabe under house arrest after seizing control of Harare last night. But who could replace the elderly dictator? And uh, it seems that the name that is mentioned is Mnangagwa's name. Kuda Magombei finally free at last. Uh, Onotsida Nyoni is watching. And uh, we have uh, 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 maybe I also got something from uh, Professor Mutambara who issued a statement I think this morning on the developments in Zimbabwe when you close all avenues for change in your party and country when you rig elections persistently when you violate the constitution with impunity when you arrogantly seek to establish a family political dynasty when you enrich yourself and your family and impoverish the majority, when you ruin the country and destroy the economy and destroy the country, when you forget that since 1976 to debt, your weak, uh, your wicked Machiavellian power retention strategies, strategies were wholly sustained by support of the military. When you think at 93 after misruling a nation for 37 years you are the only answer to political leadership this is what you get what is happening in zimbabwe is what you get it is a case of the chickens coming home to rest yes what is developing in zimbabwe is not the best of circumstances and it is not within the constitution but can can it be any worse than what was obtaining in Zimbabwe as described above uh, can anyone or any institution destroy the country more than what Mugabe has already done what constitutional order is there to preserve Weren't the Shenanigans in 2008 tantamount to a coup d'etat? When you rig elections, are you not carrying out a coup? So what's new? Are you starving and suffer? Are the starving and suffering people of Zimbabwe expected to feel sorry from Gabi and his dynasty? Certainly not. What is important now? is to answer the question how do we collectively work 
together to reconstruct our country for the, from the ashes that Robert Mugabe has bequeathed us. Uh, it is time for thorough reflection, national leadership vision and strategy. Arthur G. O. Mtambara. Let me see something that has been shared here. A uh, special report behind the scenes Zimbabwean politicians plot post Mugabe reforms. Documents and sources say Mnangagwa, a 73 year old lawyer and long standing ally of Mugabe, envisages cooperating with Tangrai to lead the transitional government for five years with the tacit backing of some of Zimbabwe's military and Britain, which would pursue a new relationship with thousands of white farmers who were chased off in violent seizures of land approved by Mugabe in the early 2000s. Farmers would be compensated and reintegrated. This, the aim would be to revive the agricultural sector that collapsed after the land seizures. Just yet now that Zimbabwe's first lady left last night for Windhoek, where she is well protected. So it's, uh, it's confirmed that uh, the first lady is now in Namibia. Uh, to supporters of President Mugabe, the inscription bordered on treason. They suspect that Mnangagwa nicknamed the crocodile already saw himself in the shoes of Mugabe, 93 years old, uh, increasingly frail and the only leader of the Southern African nation has not since it gained independence from Britain in 1980. Those Mugabe supporters are not alone. According to politicians, diplomats and a trove of hundreds of documents from inside Zimbabwe Central Intelligence Organi Organization reviewed by Reuters, Mugabe and other political players have been positioning themselves for the day Mugabe either stepped down or, or dies. Officially, Mugabe is not relinquishing power anytime soon. He and his ruling ZANU-PF party are due to contest an election next year against loose coalition led by his longtime former Morgan Changirai. But the intelligence reports which date from 2009 to this year say a group of powerful people is already planning to reshape the, the country in the post-Mugabe era. Key aspects of the transition planning described in the documents were corroborated by interviews with political, diplomatic and intelligence sources in Zimbabwe and South Africa. The documents and, says, and sources say Mnangagwa, a 73-year-old lawyer and long-standing ally of Mugabe, envisages cooperating with Tangrai to lead the transitional government for five years with the tacit backing of, Zimbabwe, of some of Zimbabwe's military and Britain. These sources leave open the possibility that the government could be unelected. The aim will be to avoid the case that has followed some previous elections. The unity government will pursue a new relationship with thousands of white farmers who were chased off in violent seizures of land approved by Mugabe in the early 2000s. The farmers would be compensated and reintegrated according to senior politicians, farmers and diplomats. The aim would be to revive the agricultural sector and linchpin of the nation's economy that collapsed catastrophically after the land seizures. Mnangagwa feels that revising the commercial agricultural sector is vital according to the document. Mnangagwa realizes he needs the white farmers on the land when he gets into power. He will use the white farmers to resuscitate the agricultural sector which he reckons is the backbone of the economy. A January 6, 1916, uh, 2016 report reads, Mnangagwa did not respond to repeated 
request for comment about the intelligent documents or the photograph of him holding the mark. An aide in his office said the question should be sent to the Ministry of Media, Information and Broadcasting Services. The ministry did not respond to the questions. Uh, Changrai, a 65-year-old former union leader who enjoys broad popular support, told Reuters in an interview in June he would not rule out a coalition with political opponents such as Mnangaga and wanted white farmers to come back into a positive role. Asked about the reports in the intelligence documents that potential coalition partners or their intermediaries is a to had held secret meetings. Shangri told Reuters in August, I've never met with Mnangagwa's people to discuss cooperation or coalition. There was an intention expressed by Mnangagwa's people for us to meet to discuss various issues. But the meeting never took place. According to the intelligence reports, Mugabe got wind of Mnangagwa's ideas about white farmers earlier this year. Mugabe is totally against the idea of Mnangagwa being too friendly to the whites. A report dated February 27 say, says, he fears that Mnangagwa will reverse the land reform by giving farms back to the whites. Mugabe Sophie did not respond to requests for comment. A spokesman for the British Embassy in Harare, Scapio, said the UK was not involved in any plan for a coalition to succeed Mugabe. The UK does not back any party candidate faction or coalition in Zimbabwe. It is up to Zimbabweans to choose who they want to govern them through a free and fair election. The embassy said rumors and leaked intelligence documents were promoting disinformation. The documents cover, cover the government of Zimbabwean policies and contain material derogatory of all its major players, including Mugabe. A June 13 report said Mugabe was in extremely poor health and had told his wife Gret that his days on earth are fast becoming less and less. Reuters has not been able to determine the intended recipients of the documents or their exact origin within the CIO. The intelligence agents officially reports to Mugabe, but it splintered as opposition to his rule, which has lasted 37 years. Has grown according to two intelligence reports agents interviewed by Reuters. The CIO did not respond to requests for comments sent through send it through Mugabe's office. Uh, Zimbabwe's decline, crocodile stairs, massacres, middlemen, then uh, it's quite a lengthy document. The British Embassy said it had taken no steps to influence the succession to Mugabe and that rumors were spreading disinformation. A spokesman for the U.S. Embassy said it did not back any candidate or party. The European ambassador in Harare said in an email statement that the blog, including the U.K., does not support any political party or faction in Zimbabwe, but does, does support reforms, no matter who delivers them. Some diplomats in Harare say the United States and European Union are opposed to the idea of Britain backing Mnangagwa because they are concerned about being ostracized by ZANU-PF and its G40 faction should defend and revolt and go against Mnangagwa. Uh, so that's, that's what we have.
Hey, any any update? Any what? Update. Update. No, no, up update. I no, I update no. Uh. Okay, I saw the 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 stuff that you shared. Yeah. Uh, the Namibia is it a confirmed thing? Source. Okay, so she she may be in Namibia. Yes. And uh, any news about what uh, what the transition looks like? The only thing is that 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 um, will be the next president, from what I hear, Inter interim president. Okay. And I don't, I don't know what what's going to happen to people like Mpofu, Minister Mpofu. Uh, he's Minister of Home Affairs, is it? Yeah, but I think he was. Uh, has anything been changed? I don't know, but for what I hear, he'll be out. Or oh, was he part of the gang of uh, alleged criminals? Yes. Mpope as well. I thought Mpope was on the Lacoste thing. Was what? what, was, what? Sorry. was part of uh, the this other team. Could be, I, have no, I really don't know. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's uh, uh, because uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting scenario. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm but sure it's uh, if you if you studied the Zimbabwean constitution. No. Uh, you see, there's a a technical uh, issue that maybe people uh, uh, need to maybe address. Uh -huh. You see, the president uh, has got a mandate. Yeah. And that e expires until the next election. Yes. And he's got two vice presidents, and yeah. and uh, the two are appointed by him. He's correct. So, one the if the current president vacates office, yes, then the last president acting will have he's to becomes the president. The interim president. He becomes the interim president. Yes. So the only way they can do this is from Gabi to abdicate. Or okay. or die. So do you think he will abdicate? Uh, knowing how stubborn he has been about this issue. Yeah. Uh, it means that once he abdicates, then he's accepting that ZANU PF is the national college. Okay. Because the, the only party that can elect him president is the, are the people of Zimbabwe, not the party. Yes. So to move from the party to the nation. Yes. Then it becomes a, a treacherous route. Okay. Because uh, these events were trying to preempt the inevitability of uh, some people being ejected from the party. Yeah. But if they got an assurance that that decision is reversed, and it's not going to be implemented. Yes. And by default, the beneficiaries of the alternative narrative are in prison or will be in prison or will be located outside the corridors of power. Yes. Then effectively, there is one slate going to the confer conference. Yeah. Which means uh, they can persuade Mugabe to preside over the conference. 
Yeah. And then they will need to amend the constitution of ZANU PF. Okay. To elect a vice president. Or the vice president. Yeah. And then go to the elections next year. Okay. Yeah. But isn't it on the cards anyway, the elections next year? Which one? Isn't the elections next year on the cards already? No, elections are there on the cards. And Mugabe was going to be the candidate. Are you going to be strong now? No, if he's persuaded to stand down, yes. he may, he will have to do so at the, at the conference because he is the only candidate at the, at the forthcoming conference. When is the conference taking place? December. When in December? Uh, the NPF conference, let's just see. Uh, 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 PF uh, uh, conference. Yeah, extraordinary conference. Okay. Uh, no, no, six to the twelfth. Yeah, six to the twelfth. Is it? I'm asking. I think, yeah. It, it, I'm just, I'm just trying to get the, the dates. I think it should, yeah, it should be about the sixth. Yeah, it's usually around there. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, let's say six to the, to the, to decide conference venue. So, but it should be the, f the second week of, uh, of December. Yeah. So if that is the case, then at that conference, the only name that is to be uh, considered is uh, the name of Mugabe. And uh, why? Yeah? Why that? Because uh, for you to go to conference, you need the provinces to endorse you. Similar to here. Yeah. Yeah, similar to here. So you, yeah, so you need to have uh, a, an endorsement. So, which means those moves will have to take place anyway. Okay, now tell me, what do you think of the? Oh, is the is yeah? So being critical of the current move in Zimbabwe. What do you make of that? Uh, what uh, what did Zuma say? Is it unconstitutional what they're doing in Zimbabwe? He, yeah. He, he has to say that. Uh, what else can he say? Because it's already, it's already done. Yeah. Uh, what has he got to say? Okay, then... then Minister of Defense and, and Minister of uh, Intelligence to, to Harare. Yeah, so from the outside, uh, it, it appears that this whole thing is actually done to protect the president. Yes. Yeah. So, and the, the military is not saying they want to interfere with state matters. Yeah. But they want to pre preempt the criminalization of succession. Uh -huh. So if criminals get, they are not opposed to anyone being a president. Yes. They are opposed to criminals uh, capturing the presidency. 
and they are stockholders. If that comes to the fore, then they will not have they, they will not have any hesitation. Somebody has said uh, the military will be presiding over that conference. Yes. They want to impose Mnangagwa as the leader of ZANU PF at the conference. Yeah. Which means uh, they need the the infrastructure to take control of the infrastructure of the party. Yeah. Then if people don't accept Mnangagwa as their leader, yeah. we should expect more years of military rule. Oh, yeah. That's what they're saying. Uh -huh. So that's what one is saying. Okay. What would it be possible in today's age? That's what Zuma is saying, that uh, that option is not acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, all the people in Zimbabwe, they know the 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 sentiment yeah. of uh, their colleagues in the region. Okay, now I can back. All right. All right, sorry, thank you. Bye-bye. So that's uh, so that's the 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 future that we are talking about. No elections next year. This makes Zanu strong as before. Hello? Yeah, no, I saw the statement. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, what, uh, what is important now is to answer the question, how do we collectively work together yeah, yeah. to reconstruct our country from the ashes uh -huh. that Robert Mugabe has bequeathed us? Yes. Uh -huh. But what I wanted to do now with that statement is to free people from technical arguments. The day constitution, hey, what, 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 what. Those are boys. And so, yeah. those are boys. What can we, how can we craft a new future from this? Democracy, I think I have this one my extra legal means. It's an opportunity. You don't want to miss one. I think I'm going to find what I'm going to do. Okay. But uh, what is your reading of the of the way forward from? Let's say I was a military. I don't, I don't want to be. Pre no, no, no. I said that I don't want to be preemptive. I want to set the terms of reference. That is how you know uh, ambivalence and confusion around the means that have been used to bring about change in Zimbabwe. Those are poor. Okay, I'm saying is that is accepted that uh, it happened. Now you are saying the way forward is uh, a. <laughs> yeah. It's an opportunity to craft a future for the country. That's what we're emphasizing. Okay. So that's a that's a yeah that's a that's a yeah. Yeah. So I know it, but 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 you know but what's your sense? I mean the, the statement my owner says before we go to the critical matters. 
No, no, I'm saying it's a it's a it's a it's a good statement, but uh, it uh, personalizes a an issue that may be broader than. No, but that's just to that's poetry. Don't get confused. That's poetry to make a statement. Okay. Yeah, in poetry, yeah. communication one oh one. Yeah. So I'm saying is you know the poetry better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I I need to understand the okay. Yeah. Okay. It's all communication. Okay. But the point being made is that um, this thing was predictable. Okay. It was ine inevitable. Okay. So most importantly, the argument is that with the democratic means were not allowed within the party. Democratic means were not allowed in the country to bring about change. Now, when you do not allow democratic means to bring about change, you make illegal, extra-legal means inevitable. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I, I want to, I want to understand so that I can, I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I think that's a that, yeah. That's a position. Yeah. But anyway, let, let's say let, what, what you are correct. The issue is to address that last question I posed. Yeah. Would the house this life counts is powered by Zim DIT. Yeah. From the country, from the quagmire that it is presently in. No, and it's not an easy question because my stakeholders are Gawanda, my interests are Gawanda, my motivation are Siana Siana. But what I'm emphasizing is that it's an opportunity for okay. vision, for leadership, for strategy. Okay. I got uh, something. You you heard this one, uh, the one that that is uh, circulating. Yeah, what did you imagine? Documents and sources say. Mnangagwa, a 73-year-old lawyer mm -hmm. and long-standing uh, ally of Mugabe, uh -huh. envisages cooperating with Changirai to lead a transitional government. I will do come on discussion with Chris and Yamuka. Okay. That's, just one, that's not just one scenario. We need about 20 scenarios. We need my pros and cons. Uh, have you heard that one? Huh? Have you heard that one? I've seen it several times. Yeah, now you want to go on. Ah, okay. Well, what's required? I'm aware of that. I think those units are first from bloody reasons. Okay. Okay. Is it an NTA? Is it a ZANU government? Is it an army government? Is it, what is it? Is it a GNU? What are the pros and cons? Can we do a SWOT analysis? You know? That, those are the matters I would want workshops. Okay. Yeah. Why, why don't you subject to a short analysis? Okay. Yeah. You look at another scenario, we subject to short analysis. We have about four or five scenarios. Okay. Yeah. As if she grew in national interest, she grew in vision in Nika, she grew in the city must be a peaceful, democratic, and prosperous Zimbabwe. How do we get there? Okay. So that's uh, yeah. Uh, I guess that's where the starting point could be. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, to do that, we have to get over. Some side of the All right. <laughs> okay.
So they, you have someone who doesn't want to be courted, and the, I just saw something again, just to give a. This live cast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media stream. Everyone, big. and in-house TV productions. Including 
churches and many organized all organizations so it is a constitution that represents the will of the people of Zimbabwe and it is in this constitution that we have a section that empowers the defense forces to take appropriate action to defend national security, sovereignty, and human life. What Zimbabwe has been sliding into was a state of chaos. And for that reason, all veterans here do stand with the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. Save for those that have been used by the G40 cabal. They are known. The police has been harassing people willy-nilly because they've been agreeing to be abused by the G40 cabal. And it is time for them to reform. I now read the statement. This statement theme is uh, bringing ZANU PF and Zimbabwe back to constitutionalism. We, the veterans of the uh, National Liberation War, would like to state as follows. We applaud the gallant role taken by the Zimbabwe Defense Forces in defense of Zimbabwe's constitution to normalize the situation within the ruling ZANU-PF. We urge that ZANU-PF returns quickly to constitutionalism and sets aside all the dismissals that were instigated by Kasukuere on all progressive people, especially this purging was focusing mostly on people with a liberation history. Therefore, we are saying that all people that were expelled or suspended because of the G40 cabal from the Central Committee provinces, districts, and some ordinary members, which were dealt with unprocedurally by the so-called National Disciplinary Committee. This should be reversed by the Central Committee of ZANU-PF as it stood after, a day after the December 2014 Congress. Espe 
especially during the time he was in the leadership position of the party. Why he decided to join and work with anti-revolutionary elements of this country. Why, why he has chosen either to expel or to ignore those that defended him, fought and defended him during the war and even after the war. Why he decided with his wife to denigrate the Zimbabwe Defense Forces and the war veterans, war collaborators and detainees. Why he chose to have friends only associated with the Rhodesia regime. Why he chose, why he chose to associate even with Jonathan Moyo. Jonathan is a CIA agent. Why he chose to ignore Vice President Nangagwa's report in response to what Jonathan is alleged to him. We urge that Robert Gabriel Mugabe should be recalled from his role as the President and First Secretary of ZANU PF. This is not the first time that we are doing this. We did this to Ndavandingi Stole, who had lesser crimes. Elections. 
So the army is there to restore order and sanity. And like I've said, we this has been a long overdue. And uh, we support that from the bottom of our hearts. The youths are encouraged to respect the state institutions that are mandated. We do not have a reason to have them as enemies. So when we say we want to have normalcy in the running of this country, we also want to facilitate good and proper running of political parties in the forthcoming elections. So the army is there to restore order and sanity. And like I've said, we this has been a long overdue. And uh, we support that from the bottom of our hearts. The youths are encouraged to respect the state institutions that are mandated to do particular duties in accordance with the law of the land. Uh, this country is not run by the Zambia Youth League. It's, it, it must be clear. Zambia Youth League is not an arm of government. And therefore, they should respect the institutions that are mandated to do whatever duty, responsibility they are tasked to do. And for a mayor youth who has got a history of changing goals, one day she is Gamma Talks, the other day is the first born of Grace Mugabe when Nijatunga is there uh, to challenge a five-star general. It's unheard of. And uh, we think he did this because of uh, the normal bootlegging that had become the order of politics in Zanukir, which should come to an end forthwith. We cannot end without mention of a job well done by the Commander Defense Forces and the commander of the army and the air force officers and men women and all those that have to do with the defense forces for a job well done
by the Commander Defense Forces and the Commander of the Army and the Air Force, officers and men, women, and all those that have to do with the Defense Forces for a job well done. to us and what has been done is for Zimbabwe. We call upon all sections of our security forces to emulate the example of the ZDF, they should shun the practices of yesterday, where some were used by Kasukwere Kabao to arrest and prosecute innocent revolutionaries whose only crime we do not have a reason to have them as enemies. So when we say we want to have normalcy in the running of this country, we also want to facilitate good and proper running of political parties in the forthcoming elections. So the army is there to restore order and sanity. And like I've said, we, this has been a long overdue. And uh, we support that from the bottom of our hearts. The youth are in. This life cast has been pumped. Uh, as you are saying that uh, as you com 
sharing between your medical presence and your own department. Does it mean that as your veterans, you are also bitter that is anything she did get instead of paying for the medical? So, so, uh, so there you have it. I think uh, it's uh, clear what uh, the war veterans has represented at the press conference are saying. And uh, they come from the same vantage point as uh, the army, that there is a state of chaos. And they align themselves with the Zimbabwe Defense Force. They want to bring ZANU-PF and government to constitutionalism. They applaud the gallant effort uh, by the Zimbabwe Defense Force to restore normalcy and they raise the injury of dismissals uh, from the last Congress of 2014 through today, which they allege were instigated, orchestrated, and executed by Honorable Kasukwere. They said there were people who were suspended arbitrarily, unilaterally, without following any procedures. And the cure they propose is that all those persons who were suspended unprocedurally and unlawfully, according to them, unconstitutionally, must be reinstated. Uh, and whoever was there at the time must remain in situ. So they are calling for restoration of the structures that followed the Congress of 2014. Then they are proposing a commission of inquiry to investigate the president uh, on allegations of working with and associating with anti-revolutionary forces. They also want to examine why the president denigrated the defense forces. In addition, there's an allegation that President Mugabe associated himself with people tainted he associated with the Rhodesian government. They also raised the issue of uh, Professor Jonathan Moyo uh, and say he is a CIA, a CIA agent, which means a spy in the structures of ZANU-PF. They also say the Politburo was given all the necessary information confirming Professor Moyo's association and working for the CIA in destroying ZANU PF from within. They also raised the issue of the role of the Women's League 
the youth league in ZANU PF, and they also raised the issue of recalling the president from office. They reaffirm that elections will take place next year and uh, there is need to prepare for the elections. Uh, they say they respect state institutions and uh, they would not want a repetition where state institutions are borrowed for private use or private benefit. So they raise the issue that the country is not run by the youth league or bootlickers. They also congratulate and salute the role played by the commander of the defense forces, uh, General Chuenga, the Air Force, and the Defense Force in protecting and prote promoting what they call constitutionalism. They say they are fighting for normalcy. When asked where the president is, the question was dismissed on the basis that up to now nobody has bothered to find out what the president does, where he is, why should that be a question now? That's uh, one position of one wing of the war of vets. And uh, obviously that statement has political ramifications, political implications. And uh, if you look at consistency, and uh, of approach and uh, working in the narrow limits of uh, constitutionalism, you can understand how difficult it is. Is uh, something else. Might SADC or AU support a constitutionally elected leader a question is posed. Somebody understand that a military sent back the SADC mediation team sent by Zuma that they have been sent packing. I saw something uh, on Zimai. Uh, I'm not too sure whether that is a fact or fake news, but that's what has been uh, Zim, Zuma invoice blocked, struggle to enter Zimbabwe at the International Harare Airport. So that's uh, Terence Mawawa, a delegation that has been tasked by South African President and SADC Chairperson Jacob Zuma to negotiate power, a power transfer deal in Zimbabwe is struggling to enter it as emerged. At the time of writing, an army so suggested to Zimai the delegation could be sent back, technically deported from Zimbabwe. Early this morning, President Zuma dispatched his emissaries to Zimbabwe so that they can negotiate a power deal for his ally, Robert Mugabe. The development sparked an outcry with Zimbabweans complaining that Zuma wants to spoil the progress covered by the army so far. The delegation that has been tasked by SADC chairperson Jacob Zuma to assess the situation in the country has been ordered by armed forces to return to South Africa. They were told everything was under control. They were told Zimbabwe was not in a hurry to seek assistance from SADC or any foreign body. However, it has been said negotiations between the military and the delegation are still in progress. Zima will keep all of you informed. It's being stated, but there is no, 
there is no uh, evidence supporting that uh, uh, version. And uh, uh, there is a big Zora, where are you? Zim is crying for you to come. Motherlands needs people like you. Somebody from Ghana. So there we are. I think you have heard it. If you see anything in the statement, please do share. If you see an angle there, that may shed more light as to what are the possible and plausible scenarios going forward, please do share. This platform is really for you, for people to begin to become active citizens. Take responsibility for outcomes. All too often, people have assumed that tomorrow is the day after today. And that it will come whether one does nothing or does something. That attitude, oh, that attitude then burdens a few to deliver the future that we all may want individually and as a collective. Like Tasha said, society does not exist but individuals do. Yes, the army may be the credited for what is taking place or unfolding, but the individuals deserve notice, identification, and also saluting. It's not the defense force, it's the individuals. As we listen, when your voice is missing in action, other voices will always be there. It is those who choose to say something instead of saying nothing who always shape and define the character and personality of any dispute, any issue, when history looks back and when we all look back whether we are dead or alive and we were asked to interpret what is taking place let us not find our voices missing let us be the agents of the change that we want to see. What is the army saying? What, is the war, what are the war veterans saying? All the actors, including you, what you choose not to say creates a vacuum filled by those who always have something to say. And there are many whether they are wrong or right, whether their actions are misguided or not, they will always have an opinion. They will always have something to say. So I encourage you to be the voice and the author of where you think things ought to go. The Orphans have spoken about their own vision. They are not saying that they don't want elections. They are saying the people of Zimbabwe must decide. They are also saying that the elections must take place as constitutionally man mandated. They are not mentioning any names. They are all they are saying is ZANU-PF has got work to do. The members of ZANU-PF 
have to rise to the occasion and be able to reconfigure, restructure. And what has happened is given an opportunity for ZANU-PF to get its act together so that come election, the people have a clear choice of who to bet on. This is prescribed, it's circumscribed, that whatever is taking place is about the soul of ZANU-PF as a creature of members. So that's what we have. Uh, I can say, keep thinking, keep applying your mind to issues. The more you personalize issues, the less Zimbabwe will be the kind of platform that speaks to the human spirit. The many who have left Zimbabwe because they just find that what is going on there does not speak to their spirit. So how do you restore that spirit, the spirit of creativity, the spirit of innovation, the spirit of thinking outside the box, that spirit of independence, self-determination, originality, and the ability to think organically without a script, without hearing someone else's voice, you must have an opinion on something. Don't have an opinion. There are men with no opinion at all on anything. So nothing becomes something. So if we can take off that, refuse to be a cowed into silence, yes, Today we're seeing a, a new chapter. We're talking of constitutionalism, yet what may be taking place in Zimbabwe may de defeat that object of constitutionalism. So if it's the action is not against me, it must be. unconstitutional and where it visits me then I have a different view on the same act let's have consistency if we say the law defines who we are that in any system there must be separation of powers that there must be checks and balances. Let's fight for the principle of checks and balances. Somebody calls me a criminal. There must be due process of law. First, to identify the cause of action and also to make a determination whether there is an infringement or not. The moment it becomes self-help in terms of if I decide, Brian Musekiwa, thank you for saying that it's an informative broadcast platform. If I decide I don't like you, then that becomes the end of all roads to justice. Yes, we may differ, and I guess what gives rise to all this is arbitrariness of some people where suspensions became the only recourse, expulsion, this zero-sum game, this scorched earth policy, 
that if it's not my way, there must be no way. That if it doesn't come to an end, it is like cancer. It will spread. And we will end up all blind. This is just the beginning of restoring citizen power. Of restoring the powers of nature, the rights of nature. So let's build from the promise. Let's build from the foundation on what this human enterprise is all about. Until we meet again, I trust that you keep your mind at work. Reflect, think about what is taking place. Then abstract from what is taking place to what this creature called Zimbabwe. It has no voice, no eyes, no ears. It is there because it's created by men. What would you want this creature to think of us? To wish us? Because itself does not need us. We need each other to inch up where we need to go. Whether it's opportunity, whether it's professional growth, you can't do it alone. So how do we build a future that respects the indivisibility of men, the interdependence of men, the interrelatedness of men and the mutuality of men. So we are the custodians and we are the authors. So goodbye. <laughs>